studying in the Islamic world, I was against the concept of building mosques. Hmm. I wanted to build institutes. We hmm. have a lot of mosques, hmm. and Muslims will pay when it comes to mosques. Hmm. That's one of the most easiest things to establish. Hmm. And alhamdulillah, we have so many mosques in Sydney. Maybe this year alone in Sydney, we had six new mosques opening. Okay. Alhamdulillah. But mosques, and you know, the mosques only bring people to pray. We need institutions. We need institutions to train people. We need institutions to graduate imams. We need institutions to, you know, to give awareness, education. Hmm. And that's one of the things that we worked on when myself came back in 2001. And we established a big and large youth center with institutions and you know, different uh, training uh, programs and activities. And, uh, and this is like, again, we go back to the challenges that we had is that as a Muslim growing up in Australia, I never experienced someone to come and teach me Islam the way I understand hmm. the language. You know, hmm. we had all these imported imams or from uh, uh, overseas imams who came into Australia, never spoke English. Hmm. So how are they going to communicate with me? I don't even understand the Arabic of my mom and dad. Hmm. Hmm. You know, that's why we say in Australia the only communication form between us and our parents was the kitchen language. Hmm. Give me this and take that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. More than that, we don't understand. Mm -hmm. So I grew up like myself and many Muslims in Australia. We never had someone who spoke our language, understood our mentality, because speaking the language is one thing, and the mentality is totally different yes, thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now, alhamdulillah, we're working on that. Mm -hmm. I get so many imams in Australia, even though they are qualified imams, they will ask me, can you send one of your students to come and give khutbah al jum'a, you know, the Friday sermon, mm -hmm. instead of me, because the, my audience don't understand me. Mm -hmm. The language is playing a huge factor now. So, so you, are, you are still facing this because in many European countries now we are moving towards you know, having imams. Even though they are not always trained here in the West, they, they, they speak the language better, they get a better sense of what it is. Because we are the third and fourth generations uh, and, and this is something which is quite important. The, what you are saying is really to focus on the youth is, is also about you know, the way we speak about our religion, the, way, the examples, the models that we are carrying and conveying. But it's also something that we have to add is that when it comes to entertainment, when it comes to culture, when it comes to arts, it's quite, it's quite, we are quite superficial as Muslims on that field, in you these know, fields. You know, Dr. Tarek, last census it says in Australia, 80% of the Muslim community is under the age of 40, hmm. which means what? Most of them are English speaking. Hmm. And that's why you find that, alhamdulillah, now more English institutions, more mosques, more centers are delivering the sermon in English. But what's also important is the mentality, hmm. okay? Understanding how to deliver. Hmm. Because you could know how to speak the language, but the content of the language and the content of the speech maybe does not befit the mind. Hmm. And this is where we're working hard on. And we, that, that's where I come back to what you mentioned before about establishing institutions for that. Hmm. And obviously this is da'wah, and da'wah is talent. Preaching is a talent. And that's why we will learn from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he says, Anzilun nasa manazilam, deal with people according to their level. Hmm. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to deal with everyone, <coughs> according to their level, everyone with a different level. So that's one of the challenges that we had in the past. Thank you so much. I think that, uh, once again, uh, this is the, the challenges of the past. They are the challenges of the present as well. But I think that during this discussion here, we have been able at least to, 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 to get a sense of what is happening in Australia, comparable to many of the situations that we have in European countries and, and elsewhere. But you, 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 you made a very important point, is that the relationship uh, uh, of Australia with all these other countries, because it's very close to Indonesia, very close to, to uh, Malaysia, very close to uh, Muslim majority countries, and, and the immigrants are still coming, and, and as we know, Australia is not going to survive economically without immigrants. So we, Australia need them, but sometimes we have resistance from within. At the same time, there are uh, challenges from within. And, and we spoke about, you know, uh, getting a better sense of what it means to be an Australian, to deal with the identity crisis, to, to deal with the language, to deal with uh, mentalities, to deal with institutions, not only to build mosques, but to be able to, be, to, 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 to build institutions. And for the future, to have imams being able in this country, uh, uh, to, uh, in Australia, to deal with the people, to, be, to deal with the, the, the youth and to give them a better sense of what it means to be a uh, 
uh, an Australian Muslim. There is another thing which we uh, uh, talked about, which is the cultural dimension. And, and I think that we have to be very, very creative in many fields. And this is what you are trying to do, coming back with you being born and raised in Australia and trying to deal with this community. I think that uh, what we got from your experience is that a share who is an Australian share trying to deal with the reality of Australia as an Australian and understanding the mentality, the language and the challenges from within and with the surrounding society to let the people understand what Islam is and not to convert the people but just to, bet, to get a better sense of what is the very essence of this religion. Well, that's all we have time for. Please let us know your thoughts and views on any of the shows you have seen and here is the way to contact us. We'd like to hear your views on today's show, as well as ideas for future programmes. You can do this by emailing us at islamandlife at presstv.co.uk. You can also join our Facebook page by searching Islam and Life on Press TV, where you can view past programmes, keep up to date on future shows, leave comments and meet other Islam and Life fans. Finally, I would like to thank my guest, Sheikh Shadi Suleiman. Thank you so much for coming all the way from Australia and giving us some of the, the, the a better understanding of what is happening in your country. And I hope to see you next week, inshallah. <laughs>